And as we do this this morning, we are connecting with a whole street in this particular service. So I'm going to ask all the fathers and husbands to come out in this service. Come out, all the fathers and husbands. It's one of our smallest services, but it doesn't matter. You guys are champions. So let's put our hands together. Bless the Lord for fathers and husbands. And we're going to connect with whole street right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Fathers and husbands in whole street. Want to ask them to also come out, come out, come out, come out. Praise the Lord. Come on, fathers, husbands. We ask you to come out to the front right now in the name of Jesus. We'd like to celebrate you. Let's keep putting our hands together, everybody in whole street and everybody in prayer city. Let's celebrate the fathers, the husbands. Let them come out. We bless God for you. We thank God for you. We celebrate God for you. We rejoice this morning and we know that we are here today because of you, because of fathers and because of husbands. Put your hands together one more time for them. As they're coming out in whole street, I like to just say that uh, without a father, you are all from lost. Whenever, I mean, I'm a big TikTok person. Sometimes when I'm on my treadmill, I'm watching what's on TikTok to distract me from the pain of exercise. And I'm often watching this uh, family court. I don't know if some of you have seen those American family courts. And when you watch the American family court, you see 30 year old, 40 year old in tears because one, either that father was an absentee father or two, the father had created a family without roots. And three, some, some of these guys, 40, 35, they are just discovering who their father is. And the guy is still arguing, I ain't your father. And so on and so forth until DNA connects them to the person who came out to say, I'm looking for my father. But this men who are here today and this father, some husbands who are here today, we celebrate them, we believe God for them that they will continue to be a blessing. If Father directs, may you be a director and may you direct your children right. If Father respects, may you be the one that helps your son to, and your daughters to be a blessing in the world. In other words, fathers respect our space, they respect our views, they respect our dreams, they respect our individuality. And I pray that God will use you in that way. Fathers correct, and you can never outgrow a father when it comes to correction because what a, a young man sees standing, the father already saw it while sitting. In fact, the father, the father sees more than that. We pray for you today that God will make you an instrument of correction. A father protects, and no matter how grown up your sons are, and your daughters and your father, they will come when then the grandchildren come in. God still gives you the burden of praying for them to protect them. May you be a protector. A father perfects. You leave a son and he'll be a daughter to do their own thing. They will become what they want. They cannot make impact. They will, they will be like something that is not straight. Correction, perfection is not easy. Particularly because you saw the danger of what they are doing. The danger of where they are going. We thank you for being fathers who, who perfect your children. And I pray that your children will bless their generation. You know, nowadays you open newspapers or you open social media or you, you watch TV and you hear of some 11 year old, 16 year old who carried a gun to school to shoot other children because his girlfriend left him. If he had been raised in a home where the father was there and his father taught him, that sometimes somebody will reject you. But rejection is not the end of your life. He will not carry gun to go and shoot another person's child. So we celebrate these fathers one more time. For perfecting us, for making us better. A father also connects. When you took your good money, and by the way, all the sons and daughters need to know this. When your father and your mother denies themselves of good things and sent you to school, Paid your school fee. Made sure you went through uni. Paid the price. It is because they want to connect you to the future. Connect you to a better life. 
uh, sometime this week I'll be dealing with a young man whom the parents sent him to Canada to go study with a lot of money and his father also left him an inheritance then the father died and the absence of a father and the mother that was very distant he blew all the money and was not serious with the study after you two years university he has, he has no money to continue his 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 scores are not even good enough then Canada tells him to leave he gets back to his country and he says struggle to get a university I'm trying to help him get to university in Ghana where they don't need a, there's a difficult prerequisite in my country where you have to do this exam before you enter the university and it has kept many at home in Ghana they don't need that you have all the papers I'm trying to put him there but they look at his result all the way from Canada not good enough to even make him go and start in second year after wasting all the money because of the absence of a father and now he has to face the fact that he has spent five years wasted and he has to go and start again and arrogance has come and he's unable to accept it well I'm about to tell him some truth that in 10 years time when his younger brother and younger si and older sister come home for Christmas to their mother with their husband and children in middle class life he will be some gate man somewhere is he ready for that or is he ready to eat his pride we thank the fathers for being the ones who connect us to become the best that we can be in life somebody celebrate a father this morning celebrate the fathers this morning so we celebrate all these men all the fathers all the husbands whom God has called whom God has blessed whom God has made all that he has made them and as we pray for you today we believe that the prayer the declaration into your life will stand in the name of Jesus you will be a blessing you will touch your generation you will make impact your sons and daughters too will make impact then we declare that you would live long and you will bless your generation fathers the F in father stands for faith may your faith be strong in testing times may your faith be strong in testing times may your faith be strong and I pray for you may you be the evidence of the faith in God the kind of faith we will follow the kind of faith that will help us to grow in God may you be that kind of person in the name of Jesus the A there is the A of attention I pray for you today God will give you attention God will hear your prayer God will give you attention he will he will come close to you and minister to you as you have taken the time to give your sons your daughters attention cutting down everything may you too also your prayer will not fall and die somebody say amen with power when I say attention I remember when my sons were younger I had the option to do a master's program I think every hill college somewhere in southeast London here has a master's program in theology I had to decide do I want to begin to go there every day or be at home to raise my sons I had to walk away from the program I knew that I can read all the things if, if I don't need a certification I can read all those things and all of you who have been in classes you've never even asked me what my degrees are but the degree you want is to look at my sons and see if they serve the Lord and if they are serious in God as you give your sons attention sacrificing your own life I pray for you today your life will be fulfilling your life will be fulfilling your testimonies will be strong your life will be awesome in the name of Jesus somebody shout amen, amen. the T in fathers is for testimony I declare and decree on every father and husband that you will be a channel of testimony people will look at your life they will see testimonies the testimonies of the goodness of God the testimony of the grace of God the testimony of the favor of God the testimonies of the blessings of God the testimonies of the hand of God the testimonies of the move of God shall be in your life in the name of Jesus H in the name in father is for health may you be healthy may you be strong any of the fathers and husbands who is going through a health challenge right now we lay the hand of faith on you we command total healing 
total deliverance God will give you strength you will live healthy healthy to see your children your grandchildren your great-grandchildren you will handle generations and you will be a blessing to those generations in the name of Jesus E in in father is for employment it is for entrepreneurship we pray for the fathers the husbands that God will bless your employment he will bless your business your enterprises your dreams your visions will become a testimony people will see the hand of God on the works you do in the name of Jesus you will carry testimony in the name of Jesus the R in father is for relationships from today may your homes be strong may your relationships be strong anyone who will come and create problem in your journey in your destiny God will cut them out wrong plants wrong implanting in your destiny God will remove them relationships that care God will send them to you relationships that bless God will send them to you relationships that lift God will send them to you you will not fail you will not fail you will not fail you will not fail in the name of Jesus I pray for every father every husband God will give you wisdom God will give you direction in these days when there's more confusion more in Europe and America and the Western world as to the sexuality of children I lay hands on you today you will not be part of that confusion you will not be misled you will not be misdirected you will walk in the grace of God in the wisdom of God in the power of God the hand of God will be on your life on your home on your marriage on your destiny I declare and decree you will succeed in everything you lay your hands on you will succeed so shall it be we declare again so shall it be I say one more time so shall it be in Jesus name let us celebrate the fathers and the and the husbands one more time come on bless the Lord for them praise the Lord for them bless the Lord for them bless the Lord for them praise God fathers take risk fathers take risk I know I'm not supposed to preach a long preaching because we see I have the message for the day but the fathers have to stand in the gap for you I pray for you that you will be the A for approachable fathers A for amenable fathers fathers who agree with your children's dreams father I pray for you that you'll be the A of admirable fathers fathers we can look up to and we can see greats I pray for you again that you'll be attention giving fathers who stop to teach the child how to lace their shoe how to do their tie I remember one of those two young men telling me you taught me how to lace my shoe I'm saying did I really I can't even remember when I took the time to teach how to lace shoes I pray for you today that God will make you a blessing your children will never regret they will always celebrate they will celebrate I declare and decree they will celebrate shout amen with power amen. you know when you are a good father even when you are 110 your children don't want to go I remember my father-in-law was approaching uh, maybe 89 or something and it was getting close to past year and he's 60th or something and she was praying the mom was here 60th then he leaves before the date oh my god it's like why did he leave before my 60th birthday fathers have to go but you will stay long oh somebody say a powerful amen today so we celebrate you we appreciate you we thank god for you may you always be blessed as a church krcc this today we decided to bless you with a gift bag a bag which you can put your bibles that is if you still carry the paper bible and uh, if you don't put your bible you can put your ipad and uh, if you don't put your ipad or your or your bible you can put money so it becomes your money bag it's just that if you carry a money bag this size i am praying for you goodness and mercy will follow you robbers will not see you in the name of jesus so i like them to begin to give each of the men a bag each a bag each well women your time will come you've always collected something better than us this woman eh ah jesus man they always bless themselves with parties with 
going out to eat with 200 pounds i'm still complaining any woman who ate with 200 pounds who have not registered for igoc oh it's 100 pounds but see i is protesting 100 pounds that's a lot of money man 100 pounds well you people who are spending 100 pounds to eat at the women's event the crusade we're about to do in africa that 100 pounds will feed 10 families in one week so you better mm, one more time to everyone here in whole in prayer city and to those who are in whole streets we speak blessings on you we speak grace on your life and the young men who look forward to marriage the young women who look forward to marriage god will direct your path god will order your step you will not be misled you will not take the wrong step favor and blessing will rest on you goodness and mercy will follow you divine direction will be your portion so shall it be in jesus name amen let the whole church stand up whole street prayer city let's put our hands together one more time as we celebrate the men as they go back to their seat as they go back to their seat god bless you man god bless you man god bless you man god bless you you may go back to your seat the lord bless you the lord bless you the lord bless you praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord this morning glory to god glory to god glory to god amen 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 praise god i said praise the lord well it looked long but that was only short it was only for 11 minutes oh no uh, it was uh, for 17 minutes you may be seated in the presence of the lord welcome to live class trust in the lord that this morning the word of the lord will bless you the word of the Lord will encourage you. The word of the Lord will empower you. In the name of Jesus. Last week we began David's business school. David's business school in life class. And our hope and intention was to challenge our life. By looking at the life of David. To see his success secrets. To see his business secrets, to see his management secrets, to see how he managed life, how he managed relationship, how he managed people, how he managed circumstances. If you don't learn from other people, you continue to repeat the same mistake. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the earth is come. In other words, we should learn from them. So we see from David, the man who challenged Goliath, the biggest, tallest man of his days. God is teaching you from that, that you should challenge your, 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 your challenges. Challenge the challenges and be ready for God's backing because you will overcome. You will have a testimony. We see David also, he stood against Saul. He stood against Saul, the, the king of his days. Because Saul, who should have behaved better, was now attacking the young man David. We see David also that he withstood humiliations of siblings and rivalries of mates. The siblings humiliated him when his father would not invite him to the day when they were ordaining a king. His father forgot him. And then his siblings, when he showed up at the war front, his brothers said, what have you come here to do? Have you come to see the war? And then he experienced rivalries from his mates. <laughs> These are people who had no food, no clothes. Their life was distressed. David gave them a future. Now they forgot and they began to rival him and began to question his leadership. David also was that shepherd boy who became a great king. I see a lifting in your life. I see a testimony in your life. I see favor in your life. David prevailed in the face of adversity. Adversity is sometimes a necessity it is your university that leads you in prosperity. If you don't go through it, you don't become anything. T is not T. 
until it goes through hot water. So listen, when you go through adversity, it is not that God rejected you, it is that God is giving you the chance to be the best. So from David we learned, we are going to see 10 things, we've already seen five. Firstly, God is teaching us day through David to master your craft. Anything you are called to be, be the best. Tell your neighbor to be the best. Say it again, be the best. In other words, the, when you are the best and you are diligent in what you do, you will rule. The hand of the diligent will rule. The lazy man will be put to forced labor. When you are diligent, you'll be a ruler. There are people who rout for leadership when they have not qualified. But when you are, when you are good at what you do, doors open for you. Be good at what you do. Help, so this will help you to stand when lions come, when bears come, to want to destroy you because you are good, you are strong, you are, your vision is good, you are able to stand. It helps you to fight Goliaths. You know, Goliath will eat up anyone who is not good at what he does. But when you know where you are going, when you are firm, you are strong, you are committed, your dream is strong, you know your product, you stand firm in the confidence God has given you, you will be an achiever. That's your story. Secondly, find and use your unique selling point. No man on earth is without a gift. Somebody scream, I'm gifted. No, 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 that's a five in the morning, I'm gifted. You have to say like you really believe, I'm gifted. In other words, there's a gifting in you. There's an ability in you. The world should miss you if you were to leave the world today. What makes you to be missed is your USP, your unique selling point. Some young man one time said, oh, this is our system. They put a retirement age at 70. Uh, this, was, no, this is not KRCC, KRCC, really. Uh, we don't have that retirement system. And even if they do, I'm already retired since for 20 years ago. I'm just helping you people. <laughs> Praise God. But this is somewhere else. But you see, the man who they were looking at, oh, he retired everyone. Why is he not retired? If they retire him, their system will go. He's their unique selling point. He's the greatest strength they have. He is the, I mean, he's the anchor point. All they are looking at is age, not stage. I let, I let you know today, even when you are 90, you will be a blessing. Grace will be on your life. Your gift will make room for you. In fact, you will not run after anyone. They will be running after you. In the name of Jesus, the blessing of the Lord will be on your life. Shout amen with power. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 22 verse 29, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before ordinary men. God is taking you to places. David has such unshakable confidence because he's a gifted warrior. The Bible says the soldiers behind David and I know it's a hyperbole or hyperbole. The Bible says the soldiers behind David could shoot one hair of your head with an arrow. That would be serious, man. For you to be able to target one hair and shoot at it. But it is because of the man who was in front of them. Listen, the world is not going to make room for you because you've always been there. It is only if you do keep your egg cutting edge sharp and you continue to be on the cutting edge. Don't let fear overtake you. Trust in God. Stand tall. The number three thing we saw was that you must stay in the game for the long run. Don't be there for two days. Don't be there for three days. Some people are looking for shortcut breakthrough, shortcut blessing, shortcut favor. They don't know that you need something you can sustain 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. May that be your blessing. Quick gratification is not what you need. You need something that you can run with. Something you can keep. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. The fourth thing we saw was that you need to build relationships. Strategic relationships and alliances. Somebody say relationships. Say it again, relationships. Look at me. You need bridges to the fulfilling of your dream. You need bridges to take you to where you are going. 
You need bridges to take you to the blessing you desire. Every dream God gives you, you can't achieve it in isolation. Somebody knows somebody. Who knows someone whom you need to know? You want to know the prime minister. Somebody you know knows someone who knows him. You want to meet the king. You want to meet the prime minister of a place. Somebody knows someone who knows how to get to them. You can't just announce, hey, I am so and so. I have two degrees from London School of Economics. You need to see me. Why? You are not the first to get a degree and you will not be the last. Papers don't open doors. It is connection to strong alliances and relationships. Someone is hearing me this morning. The people who will take you to your next level, God is bringing them into your life. Oh, please shout a powerful amen. When I look at all the blessings God has put in my life, I see somebody. I see someone. I see someone here. I see someone there. When a door opened, it because someone, somebody I knew. When a door opened, it's because somebody made a statement. When a door opened, it's because someone introduced me to someone. Where are your relationships? Who is around you? If it's the same people, you get the same level. You need men with empires in their heart. David Business School shows us that you need to build strategic relationships and strategic alliances, not to use men, but for you to bless them and them to bless you. Somebody say amen. amen. Life must be about you win, I win. Win, win. You win, I win. That's how life should be. Praise God. I said praise the Lord. When you have that kind of a way, then doors open. The Bible says, Proverbs 18, 24, a man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. David had Jonathan. Jonathan saved him from death. Jonathan saved him from disaster. Jonathan taught David palace protocol. He taught David how to hang with the high and mighty. David is a shepherd whom God is getting ready to rule Israel. But David doesn't know how to hold a fork and a knife, which hand you hold a fork and knife and fork. David didn't know all that. David didn't know where the, the, the wine glass should be. Is it right or left? You know, some of you don't even know all this stuff I'm talking about. Just put the glass there. It's for drinking. And you know, <laughs> when you go places where you should know, they'll look at you, all right. That's where she's coming from. She doesn't know where the glass should be. She doesn't know what hand. Even when you hold a fork, you don't hold a fork like this. You put the finger, you put one finger on the back of the fork. You didn't know that, eh? Really? I just thought you took the thing and chopped the thing. <laughs> David didn't know all those things. So it took Jonathan to take him through that journey. There's somebody God has earmarked to take you to your next level. I am praying for you today. You will not miss that person. Shout him in powerfully. Amen. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Oh, God is bringing people to your life. Kindred people. People with the same spirit. And if anyone is hanging around you, his line, God will expose them. Shout him in with power. God gave me a revelation like that during the night of so somebody who in front of this person, they'll be having like, yeah, all the file are okay. We've done everything. And as soon as they left, the person left, they said, look at him. He thinks we are doing what he said. We are not doing what he said. But they did not know he has not entered. He's still outside listening to them. So when they now saw him, they were embarrassed. Um, we did not mean what we said just now. Jesus, man. It was a real nice season revelation. Nice season revelation. Praise God. Anyone walking in deception with you, while you are walking with wholeness of heart, and holiness of heart, God will expose them to you. You will not walk in darkness. You will operate in favor and blessing. In the name of Jesus, which leads us to number five, learn from the enemy. Learn from the enemy. Learn from the enemy. Observe and learn from Saul. From other people with strength. David learned from Saul. He learned from the house of Saul. The two things you learn from the enemy is what to not do and what to do. 
There are some people you should go to their school without registering. By looking at them and learning how not to do things. Is somebody hearing me? By looking at some people and learning not to do things the way they do things. I see God leading you. You will not just compete, you will succeed. You will not just learn, you will be a blessing. I pray for you, you will be, you'll be lifted. Shout powerful amen. amen. Number six is to inspire loyalty. Inspire loyalty. Are you a businessman? Inspire loyalty. Let people want to buy what you sell. Let people not want to run away from you. Are you a businesswoman? Inspire loyalty. Have you noticed you go to a shop, the person who served you well, one, three, four other salespeople showed up and said, that girl that is a little short with that nice hairstyle, uh, who is one of your salespeople, is she around? They said she's around. Said, it's how I want. Why? Because she has inspired what? Loyalty. Now these others are thinking like, but we are here. I know. But we can do the same thing. I know. But I ain't using you. Because you didn't know what was in my pocket. The last time I was here, you looked at me like, what do you want to buy? You know, some people don't know you. They think you should appear in three-piece suits when you showed up in your torn jeans. Maybe I should wear torn jeans to service one Sunday. Pastor MC will not let me. That's the problem. She's deeper than me. <laughs> Praise God. That's for me. I know that my salvation is not in the clothes I wore. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Inspire loyalty. The Bible says, Proverbs 20, verse 6, most men will proclaim each his own goodness. But who can find a faithful man? When God sends you faithful men, take them, take care of them. When God sends you faithful women, take care of them. Because there are so many people who show the face, but they are not there with you. They are not there with you. When the going gets tough, the, the, the week gets running. It is only the tough that gets going with you. Who You need to understand the power of loyalty in the journey of life. Look at me. If you're going to succeed with your marriage, you need faithful people around you. Not every friend. You tell them all the story of your marriage, your bedroom, your life. Some people will show face. In fact, they'll first tell you their story so you can relax. And it's a strategy. It's a strategy for extracting from you. So when they say, this is my own story, what's yours? Don't just listen to mine. It's a lie. Why should I tell you my story? It's you who has a, a running mouth. It's, your, it's you that your tap is not locked properly. I do not intend to open my own tap. I ain't talking. Praise. I hope I'm preaching to someone this morning. Betrayer can be close to home. Betrayal can be close to home. If you don't believe, go check Absalom. Absalom was the son of David. In fact, he was his most beloved son. Handsome, long hair like the days of the hippies. I remember going to Canada in 1979 in the days of the hippies for a Pentecostal World Conference. And one preacher's wife was there. A hair reached here. I'm wondering, what in the world is this? It was my first time I've seen it. It was my second time out of Africa. I didn't like the title of that film. Out of Africa. I'd never seen anyone with hair reaching here. That was exactly how Absalom was. But he had audacity to allow, I am nice, I'm handsome, to get to him to tamper with his father's anointing. He did not know that David may be ugly, but... When God puts his hand on you, your ordinary have become extraordinary. Glory to God Almighty. We used to sing a song a long time ago. Say, I know my Lord. I know my Lord. I know my Lord has laid his hands on me. I know my Lord. I know my Lord. I know my Lord has laid his hands on me. 
When God's hand is on you, let nobody mess with you. Let nobody mess with you because you are a woman on assignment. Like the title of our next service, you are a woman on a mission, you are a man on a mission, and you will arrive at your mission. You will achieve your purpose. You will hit your purpose. You'll be a woman of destiny. Shout amen with fire. Not only did Absalom betray his father the first time, the second time it was even worse. He embarrassed his father. Took his father's wives. Well, I don't know why David had wives. Bro, took his father's wives, slept with them in public. Public show. Jesus, man. This is not that they had a rumor. He did it publicly so that David would be embarrassed. But he didn't know that David was a very peculiar man. David played a chord in the heart of God. David touched a chord in the heart of God that made God to say, David, Psalm 89 verse 20, my covenant with you is forever. I will never, I will call things in your name, I will name things in your name. When Jesus came, he came as son of David. The city was called city of David. A star was made, was called the star of David. And now he's the one you are betraying because you are handsome. You didn't know that. Grace does not come in looks. It comes in the oil. May the oil of God be on your life. Shout amen with power. Oh, I pray for somebody here. If there's anyone betraying you behind, God will silence them. So in the turbulence of competition, loyalty is the reward. In the turbulence of competition, loyalty is the reward. If you are working with someone, please be loyal. Sow the seed of loyalty. I pray for you today, God will strengthen you. Nurture, if you are a businessman, nurture your customers. Bless them. Retain your customers. Celebrate them. Go extra mile for them. And then number seven. Number seven this morning, adapt to change. Tell your neighbor to change. Look at someone else and them. tell them change. If I want you to shout it out loud. Change! change. Job 14, 14. If a man dies, shall he live again all the days of my life? Will I wait until... My change comes. Look at me, look at me. If paleontology is correct, if paleontology is correct, then there used to be animals on earth, some of them almost the size of this room. Jesus, man. Huge. They give them all, all kinds of names. Tarasosor, Taranosaurus, whatever, Soros. The other day I saw one they found in, uh, in Zimbabwe. They found the bones of it in in, in Zimbabwe, so they huge, massive. Why did they die? Why did they die? The reason they died was because they did not adapt. Somebody say adapt. The world changed. Animal, well, you know, uh, I don't want to preach evolution. I preach revolution. I'm just saying if it is correct. Those animals became extinct because they could not adjust to become smaller, have a smaller stomach so you can eat smaller food. They told them, big, I've got to continue to be big. Until one day there was no food for them, there was no space for them, and all of them died. There used to be, there used to be elephants that are bigger than these elephants. Those ones were called mammoths. Thank you. They were called mammoths. In fact, they are tusks almost as long as here as Australia, but they wouldn't adapt. So when you don't adapt, things happen. You die, you become extinct. Tell your neighbor to adapt. KCC has to adapt. You need to adapt your business. You need to adapt your dream. You can't say, this is the way I've always done things. Very soon, nobody will know you're around. David found himself in a city in Philistine land. In the land of the Philistines, the people whose champion he once killed. He now finds himself. Suddenly somebody recognizes him. Ah, is that not David who killed our champion? Ha, David knew that there will be trouble tonight. If I don't do something, David just behaved like he's a madman. And began to scratch his head and spit all over his body. The, David feigned madness in the enemy territory. He adapted immediately. Looked stupid. This is anointed. 
This is king. This is the king of Israel in waiting. But he needed to behave like stupid. Because sometimes, sometimes, you need to humble yourself when you see that the people you've come to are very arrogant. Because if you meet arrogance with arrogance, one person will lose, and it may be you. But when you adapt, you become humble. You celebrate them. Because sometimes, my mother used to say, celebrate a madman calling, hey, the latest bridegroom in town, so that he can let you pass. Because if you don't call, hey, man, latest bridegroom in town, you call him madman, he'll show you madness. But when you see a madman on the road, say, my God, look at your hair. You are the latest bridegroom in town. You say, yeah, 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 you can go. Yeah. <laughs> you need to adapt. You need to adapt. Some people don't know how foolish they are in what they are doing, and you can see it. You need to prayerfully just, for the moment, manage their emotion, manage their attitude, manage their arrogance, Become the humblest person because there is a destiny you are going. I pray for you today. You will reach where God is taking you. You will achieve what God wants you to achieve. You will be whom God wants you to be. Your destiny will be awesome. Your destiny will be great. Shout amen with fire. Learn to survive through change. When change is happening, learn to survive it. Learn to not die with it. Don't say, my God, my life is over. I might as well just go now. You won't go. You're coming out of that valley of the shadow of death. And God will strengthen you. And you will, be test you will testify. After all the things that have happened to you, out of your ashes will come a resurrection. Out of your ashes will come forth a resurrection of glory, resurrection of favor, resurrection of blessing, and the resurrection of testimony. Shout amen with power. Be willing to adapt. Be flexible. Be ready to change. Shift with, as you see the market. As you see the situation. Shift, 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 shift. Praise God. It is people who shift that disrupt. Someone say disrupt. Or come and say it again. Disrupt. That's a new word in the world of business. Disruption. Nobody knew Tesla 15 years ago. Suddenly, it is the number one car. It disrupted the market. The people who thought we have arrived, nobody can change us. We are always on the top. It passed them and it's at the top. Tell your neighbor to disrupt. You got to disrupt by doing things people have never seen. It's a new word in the world of business. Disruption. You want to sell anything now? Don't do what everybody's doing. Don't go and stand behind 50,000 people who are on a line. Get yourself in front of the line. That's what David did. So we're saying, David Business School, you need to disrupt some things. Disrupt. I see somebody being favored of the Lord, being blessed of the Lord, being lifted by the Lord. I see a change coming to your life. A testimony. The species that survives is the one that adapts. I told you earlier. The species that survives is the one that adapts. Is the one that adapts. When you don't adapt, if you regress back to yesterday, you become primitive. What if I tell you that the place you sit in today, called Europe 2,000 years ago, was not as advanced as Africa, was not as advanced as Asia, much of the architecture you see in Europe was taken out of Africa. But some people became primitive and moved backward. The more backward you move and others move forward, you are unable to catch up. I see you lifted. I see you blessed. In your spiritual life, blessed. Your marital life, blessed. Your home life, blessed. In the name of Jesus, one generation better than the other. May your generation better that of your parent. And may the generation of your children better your own. Come on, cry and say, I receive it. Praise God. Number eight, then you stay resilient. Somebody say resilient. 
stay resilient, unmovable. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I think first, for, verse 48, I think. He says, always abounding in the work of God, unmovable, unshakable, staying tall, standing tall, not moved, not shaken, be resilient. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. Okay, they found the scripture. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, unmovable. Somebody say unmovable. Say it again, unmovable. Oh, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. You will be unmovable. You will be achieving. You will be succeeding. Moving forward. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of resilience will be upon you. You will not look back. You will not go down. You will rise all the time. You will be a testimony. In the name of Jesus, you will endure. You will conquer. I said you will conquer. You will do well. In the name of Jesus. Ah, something they said, this cannot be. You will be the first to do it. Glory to God. Oh, as you stay resilient, favor will rest on you. That resilient spirit will rest upon you. You will possess possession. You will take territories. You'll be blessed. You'll be highly favored. You'll be above, never under. You'll be winning. You'll never lose. You'll be, your life will be glorious. Your life will be a testimony to the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, this is your portion. Carry the spirit of resilience everywhere you go. Don't let anybody throw you down. You know, some people, they can't just be resilient. Oh, she looked at me. Oh, she, they said this about me. Be really resilient. Just tell yourself, 10 of this woman, they can't move me. Seven of that man, they cannot move. I came too far. I came too far. Even when there is a voice to scare me. No, 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 I, I'm unmovable. When I went to Disneyland, I didn't go to Disney World, I went to Disneyland, Disneyland is California. When you want to ride the toughest ride, I think it's the, what's it called? I think it's Snow Mountain or some Space Mountain. When you go to Space Mountain, as you line up, they test you. As you're lining up, moving forward, you see a point, it's something that says, if you suffer from heart failure, if you suffer from so and so, this is the door you can go out now. You see yourself pressing your heart, checking your aorta if it is in place. You move forward. As you move forward a little bit, they put another sign. We remind you, if you are suffering from heart failure, palpitations, whose heart does not palpitate in the face of fear? Have you, have you had not had your heart pump, boom, boom, when something scared you? I scared past the MEC this morning as we were coming. I thought we have passed our, our, our turning. Because if we pass it, I don't know in Kent. I just don't know Kent. I'll be calling the office. Tell me how to get back to church. And she said, no, I'm not talking anymore. I'm the one who was talking. She said, my heart is pounding. <laughs> who has not had pounding heart? As you know, if your heart, if you have palpitation, if you have this, this, this. Exit here. You just see people behaving like they are going to the toilet. <laughs> and they are exiting. Please, this morning, don't exit. Be resilient. Keep your eyes on God. Keep your vision. Keep your dream alive. Keep your dream alive. Walk in grace. Walk in wisdom. Blessing will rest on you. Favor will rest on you. Testimony will be your portion. You will not stay down. You will always be above. You will always win. You will never lose. In the name of Jesus. Shout amen with power. Amen. Somebody stand and shout, I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I am whom God says I am. I have what God says I have. I'm blessed all the time. Blessed going out. Blessed coming in. Everything I touch is blessed of the Lord. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. 
in the mighty name of Jesus I'm winning I'm living strong I'm living strong I'm winning in life I'm overcoming I declare my season has arrived no more delays in my life what was fashioned against me catches fire I enter a new season I break through barriers I receive wisdom to walk into my next level things are working for me fruitfulness is my portion I'm a plus generation my path is shining my life is getting better my projects are completed wisdom increases for me health increases for me grace increases for me in the name of Jesus I'm walking into increase walking into favor walking into abundance everything I undertake to do is achieving results is coming to completion in the name of Jesus my story will be heard around the world wisdom discretion is my portion in the name of Jesus put your hands together and bless the Lord this day come on come on give God praise come on bless the Lord like you really believe bless the Lord oh my soul oh worship his holy name sing like never before hey Father, we thank you for your word today. Our spirit is enriched, our lives are enriched. In the name of Jesus, we are victorious. We're rising in the strength of God and the power of God. We're becoming all that you called us to be. Your name is glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name. Shout amen with power. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord where you blessed this morning. Give God the glory, we give God glory, we give God glory, we give God glory. I want to take this time to celebrate and serve the Lord in the tithe, in the pledges. I want to worship God with that which He has blessed us with and want to magnify Him. Serving God.